we wish to apply the method of joints to analyze this truss structure. Taking into account the truss's geometry and the placement of loads, I will leverage the symmetry present in the structure for our analysis. To begin, my first step entails calculating the support reactions. Subsequently, I will pinpoint the axis of symmetry and identify the symmetrical truss members. In the final stages of the analysis, I will focus on three specific joints to determine the member forces in the right half of the truss. Taking into account that the forces within the left half of the truss mirror those within the right half, we can then draw our analysis to a conclusion. To determine the support reactions, we initiate the process by sketching the free body diagram of the truss. This diagram shows the essential details of both the truss's geometry and topology, as well as the applied loads and support reactions. Note the unknown support reactions at nodes A and B. These are the forces that we want to determine in this step. Utilizing this sign convention, we can formulate three static equilibrium equations for the entire truss. The total forces acting in the x direction should balance to zero. The combined forces in the y direction should also equate to zero. Furthermore, the sum of the moments, taken with respect to point A, must add up to zero. Upon solving these equilibrium equations to determine the unknown reaction forces, we obtain. This diagram illustrates the outcomes of the analysis conducted up to this point. By visually examining the truss and the forces that are acting on it, a notable symmetry becomes evident. Specifically, if we draw a vertical line through the truss's center, it becomes apparent that the left side of the structure perfectly mirrors the right side. Consequently, we can deduce that the forces on the left and right sides of the truss are identical. In other words, the force in member BF equals the force in member AE. Likewise, the force in member BD is equal to the force in member AC. The force in member DF matches that of member CE. Additionally, members CF and DE bear identical forces. To determine the member forces for the entire truss, it is necessary to examine only one half of the structure. We will focus on analyzing the right half of the truss, with a particular emphasis on formulating and solving equilibrium equations for three specific joints, joints B, F, and D. Joint B links two structural members. The orientation of each member can be ascertained by examining the truss's geometric configuration. The angle formed between member BF and the vertical axis is 18.43 degrees. And, member BD is oriented at a 45 degree angle relative to the horizontal axis. Here is the free body diagram of joint B. The equilibrium equations for the joint can be written as. Solving these equations for the unknown forces, we get. The direction of the forces acting on each member is indicated by the sign of the force. If a force has a positive sign, it means the member is experiencing tension. Conversely, a negative sign denotes that the member is subjected to compression. In this case, member BD is experiencing tension, whereas member BF is in a state of compression. Moving forward, we focus on joint F, which links together three members. Given that the force in member BF has been previously established, only two unknown forces remain at this joint. These unknown forces can be resolved using the equilibrium equations. The inclination angle for member BF is already known. For the other two members, their inclination angles are deduced from the truss's geometric configuration. Specifically, member DF forms a 45 degree angle with the vertical. While member CF is inclined at 26.57 degrees relative to the horizontal axis. Here is the free body diagram for the joint. From this, we derive the equilibrium equations. By resolving these equations, we determine the unknown forces acting in members CF and DF. Moving forward, let's focus on joint D. 
We've already determined the forces in members BD and DF, this allows us to determine the forces in the other two members by applying the joint equilibrium equations. Here is the joint free body diagram. And here are the equilibrium equations. Solving these equations for the unknown forces, we get. Let's examine the outcomes of our analysis, taking into account the present symmetry. The compressive force in member BF is measured at 15.81 kN. This results in an identical compressive force in member AE, also at negative 15.81 kN. Similarly, the force determined for member BD is 7.07 kN. Which means member AC is subjected to an equal force of 7.07 kN. For member DF, the internal force is 21.21 kN. And this is matched by member CE. Finally, with member CF experiencing a compressive force of 22.36 kN. It follows that member DF is under a compressive force of the same magnitude, 22.36 kN. Here is the summary of the analysis of the entire truss.